that did that burp, burp, burp. there we go yeah little dudes hey, little dudes huh hi little dudes oh yeah all right hello everybody how you doing rock and roll Tuesday have a problem it's monday it's april 1st april fool's day i should have thought of a good april fool's joke or something but i didn't instead i re-downloaded one of the wolfensteins and played that <laughs> um all right so uh true social djt dropped 20 percent today on absolute garbage earnings uh we expected that though um people were all stoked and saying "Woo, merger monday yeah let's get it and then merger monday didn't happen although april fool's day would have been a fantastic day for merger monday um jake raised some good points i think it was today in a thread he made uh talking about how in the Texas and California tax cases, liens have been placed on property owned by Butterfly, BBBY, Q, um, which implies there's properties that are not listed that have value that, you know, these tax authorities could put liens on. Um, that's interesting because... You know, most of their stuff was all leases that they that they had then had to sell, sell the leases to other entities and um, use that cash to, you know, butter up everyone else. Um, what else? Did anything else today? Duh. I don't know. Give it to me, people. What what do you got for me? What laid on me? Let's do this. Let's let's shabam. Oh, shabam. Okay. All right. Boom. Off. <laughs> no double intro today, suckers. All right. Who's happening? What's happening? <clears throat> Corporate Walnut was first. Good job. But poorly stupid. Hey, Houston. I just found out the Vatican City has an elite counterterrorism unit. They're called the Easter Seals. <sighs> Lobby was third. SJ wished they were third. They were not. Jason Blackwell, Houston. If you haven't already, can you break down McKay's PR concerning Nextbridge Hydrocarbons? I can't tell if this is good or good for us or bad. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nextbridge Hydrocarbons released a, a press release today. And why what in the world? Why? Oh, there we go. Sorry. These things aren't moving. Uh, I got to find the press release. Not that one. Here. And then, uh, 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 oh, nope. Come on, open, 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 open. There we go. It's taking a little while here. Next for charger carbons, here we go. Announces transactions. Open, open, open. All right, so. The email I got here, cookie to clack. Uh, da, 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 da. Boom, boom. Okay, so uh, Midland, Texas, April first, twenty twenty-four. This is talking about what what they are. Um, Next, which hydrocarbons has purchased portions of four drilling prospects from Wildcat SPV in exchange for 2.5 million shares of Nextbridge common stock. They are the Valentine Panther, Cowboy, and Packer prospects, all located in Southern Louisiana. Chairman and CEO Greg McKeg, uh, McCabe uh, has retained varying overriding royalty and working interest after payout on these prospects from a previous financial transaction. In order to facilitate the sales below, McCabe has agreed to forego the 25% working interest after payout he had previously while he had previously while retaining his overriding royalty interest. I have absolutely no idea what that stuff means. Uh, Andrew Stewart, if you're in here, you know anything about what this lingo means, by all means, throw it at us. The company is pleased to announce that it has already sold its ownership in both the Valentine and Panther prospects to an undisclosed party for a net revenue of $1.093 million. Additionally, Nextbridge will receive $240,000 spud fee on the first well of the Valentine and $80,000 spud fee for the first for fee on the, on the Panther. I think that means uh, they sold it, but then when the first drill happens, they get another windfall, I guess. 
while retaining its proportionate share of all associated deep rights below 19,500 feet on the Valentine Prospect. Okay, so they sold shallow, but they own deep. All right. Next bridge also retain the option, but not the obligation to participate in various working interests in the drilling of the two prospects. So they sold it. They get a chunk of change when it first gets drilled and they still own deep rights. And they can still participate in the drilling thing. That's I, okay. Next bridge also pleased to announce has entered into a letter of intent to sell its retained right to participate in the working interest leasehold on the Valentine prospect. Next bridge will continue to market the cowboy and Packer prospects, the deep rights in the Valentine prospect and their option to participate in the Panther prospect drilling. Okay. So it looks like they're going to sell them, but possibly work them or sell them and work them. Okay. McCabe said, while the Oro Grande asset is still a primary focus, I have made the decision with full board support to expand into what we deem to be world-class exploration projects, prospects. Uh, I am truly excited about these new efforts moving forward. Okay. There's a lot of oil industry specific terms there. I have no idea what, what they all mean. Uh, but it sounds like they bought these lands. They did a stock trade for these lands. Then they sold some of the lands, but not all of the rights on those lands. And they still have rights to do drilling on the lands and they get some cash if drilling is done. Seems as convoluted four paragraphs as I've ever read in my entire life. <laughs> so there we go. Man, it is what it is, I guess. Anything to add, cat? No? Word. Okay. Oh, I scratched your little face off. Okay. What was interesting, Stuart? Why aren't sidearm pitchers like the Eck more common? Uh, not sexy. I mean, there are people who are natural side armors and, and they end up there. Uh, the big problem with sidearm pitching is. Uh, it's hard for the ball to change plane. So you can throw balls and it can, if, if you're right-hander throwing to a right-hander, it can look like it's going to hit the guy then it dives in. And that's, that's where a lot of their, their uh, success comes from. But with a lot of major league hitters, they start to see like, Oh, it's the ball staying on the same plane. I'm going to rocket this thing. So the, the continued success of side armors was kind of figured out by eh, late nineties, early two thousands. Um, the last really, really, really successful side armor was what's his face? Uh, the closer for was it Arizona, was it Kim, when they won the World Series in in '01. Um, but like, they don't throw as hard, so that's less sexy. Uh, and the arms do last forever; like, they never get arm injuries. They just pitch and pitch and pitch and pitch and pitch. And pitch. It looks like completely com convoluted and looks like should tear the arm apart, but it's like way better on the arm than overhand pitching. But overhand pitching gives you a big difference of, of elevation. It comes down on you, so it's harder to pick out the plane than someone who's side arming. Uh, and uh, some Mariner guys can do a little better because the ball's coming up at hitters and that wigs them out. But um, I, other than that, like that's the only thing. Only reason I can think of is that you're getting 80 mile an hour balls on a on a plane that doesn't change, and big league hitters figure that out eventually. <clears throat> yeah, meow. Is the dragonfly thingy related to the butterfly thingy? So dragonfly is a, an acquisition company that buys like tech firms and stuff. And Ryan Cohen and what's his, but, uh, other GameStop board member guy, Larry Chang were, um, board members on dragonfly. And suddenly last year, poof, no longer board members. And then suddenly at the end of last month, bling, they're board members again. So, yeah. Uh, Nil21981, what's the website to get past paywalls for articles? 12foot.io. TFT.io. This guy. 12foot.io. I'll throw the uh, tiny little thing in the chat there for you. It doesn't work on all of them. But what it does is it takes the web crawl uh, version of that article that might go to like Google uh, uh, search and stuff and allows you to see that. There's some newspapers and things that have kind of figured out how to how to keep it from from you being able to read it, but it works on a lot of a lot of papers. Another trick I learned is if 
you select uh, copy text or select all text, you can like copy and paste it into a word processor and read the entire article oftentimes. So it will, it will like do the first paragraph, but then it will go below the continue reading, subscribe more. So there's a few ways to get around it. I'm sure that more and more programmers will figure out how to make that stuff not work. But 12 foot IO is a great way to read a lot of paywalled content. <clears throat> Uh, and Andrew Stewart, can you talk about MMAT yet? I can. I don't have too much I, to, I know about uh, to talk about. Um, and Gardner wisely refused to tell me something. He's like, oh, so I got great news. And then it's like, I can't tell you the news because then you'll talk about it in your show. So there's something I can't talk about because I don't know it. Um, but it's interesting to me that MMAT's price is flying right now. Uh, flying and that's you know still a fraction of what it was prior with the reverse split and everything but um if i were to have my guess i think someone's buying up the company i think they're buying up every single share they can get their hands on probably through lots of proxies they'll combine it all and then be like we own this and do something from there i don't know if they'll honeypot it i doubt they will because no one will ever honeypot anything even though I wish they would, right, Monkey? I wish that everyone would honey pat these little suckers. But um, something's happening there. Something's definitely happening there. Mm. The headquarters is closed. Uh, apparently, they've been paying rent on that. So the padlock on the door. Um, but they've got offices in like London and San Francisco and Greece. And so they have, they have other places where hopefully there's employees doing things there. Beyond that, I don't know. Moby, kiddo's question. What do you think about the current state of civil unrest in the Haitian capital city, and how do you think it can be fixed? Uh, Haiti is probably the most miserable place on earth to live. Um, and France carries a big burden for that. Uh, so if you guys don't know too much about the history of, of Haiti, it was a slave state. Uh, it had French plantations with a whole bunch of slaves. The slaves revolted took over the country and we're like, this is ours. And somehow negotiating the peace to end the conflict, France somehow convinced Haiti that they'll have to pay reparations to France uh, for their freedom and, and, and ha did so for 200 years, billions upon billions upon billions upon billions of dollars. Um, so basically all of Haiti's wealth kept going back to France anyway. Um, the the nation itself has been just racked with natural disasters from tropical storms, hurricanes, one of the most deadly earthquakes in history. Uh, they've been led by warlords who went on massive killing sprees. They basically had murder squads. Um, and today, the government is so ineffectual post the 2010 earthquake that uh, armed gangs basically run the country now. There's a government in name only, but it's armed gangs that run everything. Uh, in the in the 90s, when they had an authoritarian dictator who had his 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 murder squads running rampant through the country, uh, the U.S. was part of a peacekeeping group that went in and stabilized the country. And the country was slowly improving year over year until the 2010 quake. Um, so, my opinion: what can be done about Haiti is peacekeepers. Um, the, the Haitian state is in pure anarchy. Uh, people aren't getting fed. There's, there, no one's life is good. And I think UN peacekeepers have to go in by the probably hundreds of thousands and literally rid the nation of the gang problems that they have. It's violent. It's horrible. It's time consuming. It'll use a lot of money and resources, but, uh, uh, Haiti is basically, cut down every tree that exists because they need it for cooking food and staying warm and do all sorts of things. Um, their fishing grounds have been like harvested like crazy. There's no industry anymore. Baseball left and took all, they call their baseballs and think Honduras now. Um, so they need, they need, they need to stabilize the country so the industry can come back. Tourism can come back and people can have a stable life and not live in fear of armed gangs constantly. They shouldn't live in fear of the government, and they shouldn't live in fear of armed gangs. The only way to do that is a giant UN peacekeeping operation. 
And people be like, oh, we're not the world's police. I'm like, well, do you want floods of Haitians like we had in the 90s coming ashore, you know, fleeing their country that could be a nice, stable, tropical haven? Um, uh, but but we just don't let it happen. Uh, <laughs> like a lot, a lot of what's going on in Haiti has to do with American policy. And because uh, we are, you know, we are the most powerful country in the world. And Haiti is... In North America, it's in our sphere of influence. Um, we can do better. So let's do better. Let's help the Haitian people and not just do a disaster response and leave, but like help them fix things. They don't they don't have the manpower, the capital, the infrastructure to fix anything. And all that does is lead us towards um, sort of Haiti being the most miserable place on earth to exist forever. And that that just shouldn't be. That shouldn't be. It, it, let's help our friends and neighbors and make life better. Because we have the power to do that, so let's do it. AVIDs, AI vids. Uh, next page, PR thoughts, financials, and S140 million shares next. Um I think the 2.5 million that they traded to uh the undisclosed company or whatever. Or trade trade no they didn't trade those close company they traded it to a specific company to get those four prospects I think that was part probably part of the forty million so perhaps their plan is to accumulate wealth by trading the stock for for more prospects and drill sites but yeah hmm hey Julius doing some work hunting oats with goats Jason Lathrop future millionaire. Drats, what did I say? Drats, um, Drats, uh, Bamai? DRS Moas America. Okay, I think we got a couple lurkers in there, but thank you, Julio. <clears throat> okay, uh, where was I? Brum, brum, this, this window. Um, hi, Eric. Uh, hi, do you think RC will drop something for us soon? <gasps> just drop something already, man. Just let it happen. Let it drop. Let us go. Hmm. Nice drop. Let it drop already. Please. I'm so sick of twiddling my thumbs. I only twiddle my thumbs for so long. j Dog, go Mariners. Only 0.5 game behind the Rangers. Did next bridge get it on April Fool's shenanigans? <laughs> I, I know. Like... You don't want to, I don't, I don't, don't release things on April Fool's Day. Just don't release press releases, earnings reports. I mean, like DJT is a garbage company, but come on. You don't want to release the most garbage earnings anyone's ever seen in their entire lives on April Fool's Day. Like wait a day or do it the day before. You don't have to do things on April Fool's Day because everyone's going to question it. Lucas Speed, uh, next bridge email today. Seems like a, a way for them to get some money. Yep. How's your friend? Law from Wahoo. What's the next picture email about more land? That's a good thing. I I think I think Ludicrous Speed is right. I think it's a way to get some some cash, doing a little wheeling and dealing, and uh, wheeling and dealing gets places. Um, J Dog still time to put two dollars on a Powerball ticket tonight. One billion. Yeah, if you win, um, fix my truck. <laughs> Killery. Ryan Cohen, Larry Chen, and Chewy co-founders are now on board of recently reinstalled, reinstated Dragonfly Commerce, an acquire, an acquirer and developer of standout e-commerce. Yes. What's with goats? 16th. Nice. BJ BD. Uh, so DJ. <laughs> What's up, BJ? Uh, DJ BD. Yeah, but first, I'm at uh, gag order removed. Spill the beans, please. Honestly, I, I literally don't have that much. I, I don't. I I uh, know that when they were shutting down the main f uh, headquarters, they got all the clean labs. They had like a guy who had like a master's in mechanical, mechanical engineering in charge of the clean rooms. And then they fired him and put the receptionist in charge of maintaining the infrastructure and ducting for the clean rooms. That's not cool. Um, but now apparently they don't even have access to that building anymore. So, oops. 
Lost Waves. Why is I met up 100% in the past week? Why am I still down 99%? Well, you're still down 99% because of the reverse split, which never happened. Um, but it's going up because someone's buying, I think. I have no, no idea who's buying, but I think someone someone is buying. <clears throat> Lost Waves, who do you got for WrestleMania and UFC 300? Uh... Jake the Snake and um, Bruce Lee. All right, Belgian Whale. Uh, the YouTube video of RC with the YouTuber posted it in sub. Such a cool dude. I don't. I've not seen it. YouTube video of RC with the YouTuber. YouTube video Reddit. Go to that. Oh, huh. service temporarily unavailable. Really? Looks like, oh, no, there it goes. All right. It's like, write it down again. RC making appearance on YouTube. Oh, I'm not seeing this yet. All right, I'm gonna take a look at that thing. <clears throat> oh, let me reset the chat. Come on, man. Joshua Dean, Houston, love the show. Would you have any comment on the regional bank BTFP loans, commercial real estate exposure, and the overall outlook for regional banking sector? Thanks, advance. Uh, regional banks are toast, 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 and toast. Um, they are so exposed on on uh, commercial real estate. Basically, they've put all of their deposits and then some into commercial real estate bonds and, and, and mortgages. And uh, 6% of these mortgages are already in default, which is the highest ever. And more to come. There's a trillion dollars in uh a mortgage backed, no, sorry, commercial real estate bonds that are due to mature this year. And my guess is most, if not all of them, will default. The the real the investment people will just walk away because the buildings are worth so much less than what the principal on those bonds are. They're not going to pay them. They're not going to try. They're going to be like, all right, peace. We're an LLC. We're out. And that's going to be it. And then these banks are going to be stuck with it all. And that's that. Uh, the BTFP loans, the, the um, uh, bank term financing, um, these things probably would have garnered more cash if they had more uh, deposits or collateral. But they just didn't have enough. And the big thing about the BTFP was that Basically, you had these these notes, right? And on paper, this building might be worth $100 million. So it's a $100 million bond. And it's really worth $15 million. So if you were to take a traditional loan, you'd take, 15, take traditional loan the $15 million that it's actually worth right now. And you couldn't take it for the full $100 million, which is what the paper says, what the building was really purchased for. And what happens, what happened with BTFP is the Federal Reserve said, hey, we'll pretend like this is actually worth $100 million and we'll we'll give you a loan for $100 million that you can then put into reverse repo or use to cover your deposits and stuff. Uh, and now all these banks are going to have to realize what absolute garbage uh, this paper is that all their depositors' money went into. And they're going to start collapsing. They are. There's, there's just... No way for the Federal Reserve, which lost money last year for the first time ever, or the Treasury to print enough money to give these banks and truly bail them out. And the FDIC is broke. They 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 did three major banks already. They got nothing left. Uh, so without some serious acts of Congress, I have no idea what the solution is going to be when these regional banks start vaporizing. I don't, I don't know. Do you know monkey? I don't know. Not a clue. Uh, but I mean, some of these regional banks are very hyper local, like, uh, Washington federal is a little local bank here in this, in the Puget sound area. They have, I don't know, maybe a dozen branches. 
they're over leveraged by like 68% on commercial loans. Commercial loans are the bread and butter of these, of these regional banks, the big ones, your, your big city groups and, and uh, Chase and Wells Fargo, they don't really do commercial real estate the same way that the regional banks do. And this is what did the regional banks in the last time around was, was these real estate loans vaporizing and then poof, they disappear. And what seems to ha- seems to have happened is, you know, regional bank goes poof in 2008. Another regional bank, which wasn't heavy into the commercial real estate arm, gobbles them up via the FDIC seizing the bank and then bidding it out, right? And now that bank has a lot of commercial paper and it's now susceptible. So we're gonna have a bigger poof than we did, you know, 14 years ago. It's a very strange world that we're in. It's just so weird. Uh, yeah, they're toast. They're, almost every single one of those banks is is kablooey. I mean, we saw a few weeks ago, a couple months ago, uh, there was a, a community bank in Iowa that went belly up because almost all of their paper was uh, all the de- all the depositors' money was wrapped up in commercial paper for office buildings, you know, five states away. They had nothing to do with the community. So, you know, when they go poof, they don't even have the assets in their community to benefit the community. It's just, it's gone. It's gone. Uh, Michael Haight doing some lurker fishing. Pratty Ken. Kim Fusting, a dog. A dog or just the dog? Uh, Marcus Hoffren and Sad Boy Incorporated. You got a couple of them in there. Nice, nice, nice cast there. All right. Um, <clears throat> Lost Ways, what's the latest with P. Diddy? Man. Uh, he's not wanted. Apparently, the government let him leave the country for some reason. Um, yeah, so... It appears that in his homes, he wired the homes so he could spy on people and blackmail them. Put them into situations where they would do something blackmailable, such as have sex with another man, child, whatever. Uh, Or he'd force them into those situations and then blackmail them. Um, He also liked to kick the crap out of men and women uh, in a sexual way. Uh, He would have giant parties at huge hotels Big, big fancy hotels in New York, Florida, California. And uh, the first part of the party was kind of like normal party. Woo! And then the late night party was, hey, P. Diddy's going to make you rape kids. And he's going to beat the shit out of women and do all sorts of horrible things. Um, yeah. So it seems that evidence has been gathered. I'm not sure what the federal government got, but there's several lawsuits ongoing from uh, ex-artists, his ex-wife, girlfriend, that he paid. Like, she filed a lawsuit, and he paid the next day, where she accused him of just kicking the crap out of her and forcing her to have sex with prostitutes and all sorts of awful things. Um, yeah, it sounds like he's done. That that, that the law is closing in. He's going to get sued out of existence. Um, yeah, he seems like a pretty terrible dude. And then there's stories about like when he was with Jennifer Lopez, like making her carry a gun into that club. And then he killed a bunch of people, uh, then paid the witnesses to be like, oh, I didn't really like, see what was going on. And then paid someone else to take the rap for it. Um, yeah, P. Diddy is, I think he's toast. I think I think he is absolutely 100% toast. Cran Green gifted some memberships. Chad Clifford, Big Mully 12, Lee Meadows, Maui Zaddy, uh, and shark attack got a couple of them in there, man. The, the lurker fishing is, is, is going gangbusters today. Oh, look at you. You're a little fuzzy butt. Fat cat. Why are you just sit on the floor like that? Why don't you come visit anybody? Okay. Lone wolf. Yes. Powerball. Chances are much better than these stocks. At least they can't cheat. <laughs> uh, hmm. I probably should get, get a powerball ticket. I think about that. I remember to get one for Friday or Saturday and I, you know, didn't win. Uh, Andrew Dowell, what's Houston? Houston what's uh, Nancy Pelosi invested in lately? I have not checked the Nancy Pelosi stock tracker or the Nancy Pelosi ETF as of late. Um, <clears throat> uh, 
let's see here. Nancy Pelosi stock tracker. Do do do. Okay, so we haven't anything listed since December here. Her last big buy was purchasing a, uh, 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 a whole bunch of NVIDIA. She went from 1 million shares to 5 million shares. Bought a bunch of Apple, bought a bunch of Microsoft. She's buying the big tech stocks. Um, but that's that's the latest I see on that. She hasn't made enough, maybe hasn't filed anything recently. Nancy Pelosi ETF, how's it doing? <clears throat> uh, ETF name is supposed to track congressional Democrat stock trades surpasses SP 500 with tech triumph. All right. So, yeah. Follow Nancy. I'm not sure what she's buying right now, but that, that looks like older reports because that thing's since December on the stock tracker itself. Gzion drunk. <laughs> Identifies first. We can try. Andrew Dow, Houston. Oh, it's the other one. Uh, James Perigo, Houston. Happy birthday. Does the news about next charge hydrocarbons and the ability of shorts to drive down the price of Jimmy, excuse me, despite being profitable, change your feelings about Moas? Not really. I mean, they have the power to do these things until they don't. And it appears to me that A, the stock market is in a giant bubble that is well beyond sustainability. B, commercial real estate is going to bring everything down and wipe out banks like crazy. C, Chinese real estate is going to bring down an entire nation. Plus the fact that China's losing manufacturing capacity like crazy, uh, has huge unemployment numbers, and looks like it really, really, really wants to start a war that it might not be able to win, uh, could spell doom for a lot of stuff. Um... So there's, there, there are factors, I think, that are outside the control of these hedge fund and market makers. And the cards that are currently dealt allows them to continue to short this stuff because what is the basis of their, of their margin, the collateral for their margin, is doing great. Like tech stocks are doing wonderfully. But NVIDIA is a giant bubble. NVIDIA is a giant bubble where a whole bunch of chips are being purchased from them, but with money that NVIDIA gave companies to purchase chips from them. Like, <laughs> it is kind of in a rubber circle that's borderline Ponzi scheme in that way. And a lot of these companies that are buying chips are doing straw man purchases for AI capable chips to smuggle them to China, uh, which is illegal. So the criminal elements in there are going to get busted. And if that happens, you know, what then? Are we looking at hundreds of thousands of high powerful chips that should be used for these supercomputers suddenly getting seized by the government, uh, ending up where? Like, where, where are they going to go with it all? I have no idea. Um, but I, you know, Citadel has $67 billion in assets and sold and didn't deliver $66 billion in securities, meaning they naked sold $66 billion and then claim they have $67 billion in assets. In reality, Citadel has $1 billion in assets because they owe $66 billion to whoever they sold all that crap to. Uh, not, not sustainable. They're basically selling stock that doesn't exist and then using that money to pay off their uh, investors. Like, hmm, sounds a little Bernie Madoff-ish to me. Sounds a bit like a Ponzi. Again, borderline Ponzi. And all these guys are going to get their comeuppance at some point. They're all going to just blink out of existence, and then someone's going to swoop in and fill the void and, and, and grow in that space. So eventually, eventually they're doomed, and they know they're doomed. They can't, you just cannot keep up with the scams forever. They catch up to you eventually. Every single time. <clears throat> Ludicrous speed. How long until Monkey Butt figures out that when she hears the Nuggy intro, she gets a treat? She can't hear the Nuggy intro. That's the thing, is that there's no sound of the Nuggy intro entering this room. If I turn on the headphones and put them on her head, she would know what it sounds like. But 
She doesn't know. You don't know. Ignorance is bliss, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Ignorance is bliss, you little wiggly dog. Over, 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 over. Okay. Michael Harrow, Houston. You should have an intro for every time Adam Aaron dilutes. <laughs> Just like a volcano going <laughs> or something. And he manages to dilute. Uh, a couple people called it exactly. They said um, he will dilute right after GameStop earnings. And that's exactly what he did. Like perfect timing. Let's dilute right after GameStop earnings. Um, and, and at this point, he has to. Like he just has to. He's got to keep selling shares because there's no other way for them to pay back all the bonds it took out. Now, if they hadn't like given hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars in payments and uh, uh, fees and salary and bonuses and stock to um, the board members and executives, they will be doing a better job. <sighs> but yeah, AMC is, unless some like, hand of God comes down and like blesses them with a pile of money. They're pretty screwed. If I were, if I were Amazon or Disney, I would have just bought them. Be like, you know, that's only a billion dollars. Bye. And then you could distribute all your movies to these theaters. You could operate the, the theaters essentially at cost and yeah, do it that way. Fred Jones. Uh, Centro looks like they had a good fourth quarter. Net revenue increased 376%. Sales increased 827% year over year and 58.7% uh, uh, quarter over quarter. Sales volume increases 148% year over year. Adjustable uh, EBITDA was? EBITDA. EBITDA. I think that's supposed to be something else. Um, yeah, Centro used to be naked brands. They make little like industrial... Uh, like K car, electric K cars and vans. Um, and yeah, they've, they've, they've hit their stride. They're delivering like crazy. They've got like 20 models, uh, all very specific for like plumbers and delivery men and ice cream guys and stuff like that. Um, yeah, they, I used to have a bunch of their stock and then it went down like 90% and I was like, uh, <laughs> but yeah, <clears throat> What's on DJT? Oh, I wish I could afford the puts right now. Well, if there's no short it's April Fool's, wouldn't that be funny? Uh, N9, see the weird video with RC and some kid who thought he was banned from GameStop at least a few hours ago. I, I'll have to check that out. Uh, can I read? Happy birthday, HW. What's your thoughts on Home Depot largest acquisition ever is that $18.25 billion bet on housing market last serve shortage of new homes housing crash going to really affect Home Depot? Yeah, uh, Home Depot made it out of the 0809 financial crisis by focusing on do it yourselfers, right? Like the huge part of their business is contractors you need to come in, need to get parts and whatever and bulk and you put in these orders and you leave with giant carts full of things and fill up your contractor's rig and you head out and you do your, you build your homes and your office buildings and whatnot. That stuff went kaput in, in 08, 09 and Home Depot pivoted and um, they went, they, they basically like, Hey, do it yourselfers. Do you like building decks and sand and things? We'll teach you how to do it. And they started doing like, like home improvement classes where you go and you can learn how to garden or build a deck or re refinish a bathroom or do plumbing and they would teach you how to do this stuff. And then you'd be like, oh, I can all go and I can go buy all these things and do it myself. Because people weren't going to pay contractors to do it because they didn't have the money to do it. And their home value had actually gone to the absolute dumpster. So they need to figure out a way to like keep equity in their home and, you know, refinish a bathroom, a kitchen, whatever. We'll do that. Uh, if they're doubling down right now into home builders. Uh, yeah. I mean, maybe if they could somehow offer low interest loans to home builders, that might be a better thing for them. Cause Hey, here's a low interest loan. Now you take that money, you come back to my store and you buy all this stuff and then you owe me that money again anyway. So I get the money twice. That's what, that's what the economic hitmen do. Uh, but yeah, now I don't think now's the time to bet on the housing market, housing market, the prices in the house, 
of houses nationwide are dropping faster than they did in 08, 09 with limited um, supply. Supply all of a sudden goes up, those prices are dropping even more. Just in case, Houston, do you think GME will go much lower? Uh, we're still around 12, right? Uh, 11.99, yeah. So this is pretty low. This is, this is pretty much as low as it's ever gotten um, in the last three and a half years, three years and two months. Uh, Scream and deal, Scream and deal to buy right now. 11.60 dropped at about about today. Man, I'm really surprised. Like. At these prices, you'd think insiders be buying like crazy, but for some reason they're not. They're not. They're not buying. Are they not buying because they don't have any money, or they're not buying because they're not allowed to buy because they're in a blackout period? Hmm. Hmm. Uh, C. Gill, happy birthday, Houston. Uh, first of April made made X and. Already questionable news source, completely untrustworthy. Jamie declared he received a court offer, $45 per B-Boy share. Glad I didn't repost before I realized it. I got sent that late last night, and I was like, this is an April Fool's joke. I mean, I was like, do not believe anything you read on April Fool's Day. <laughs> uh, Julius, where is Andrew Stewart? We need him. And Andrew Stewart says, I'm not sure exactly what Dexbridge Hydrocarbon is trying to say back there. Well, there, there goes my hope. Anybody does finance for oil companies would like to jump in and explain what that is. Broken Air Spud fee is the payment made for to the drilling contractor operator for starting the drilling process of particular site. Okay. So they're going to get, so they, does that mean that they're being, they're now contracting to do the drilling? Do they, do they have their own drills now? Is that what they're getting? Uh, yeah, vids. What were you thinking? The new next bridge? Oh, we did that one already. Uh, D. Pi says, Happy birthday, Houston. Ham short killer is feeling extra guilty for his GTII scam. The insurrectionists on X are losing their minds. This is hilarious. Pathetic pumpers are ruining retail. GTII. Didn't, didn't they have a little pump a couple days ago? Well, it's going back down again. They're up 30, 32 cents. That little, that little pop, 35 cents in February, and then it's right back down again. But it's a continuing downwards there. Hmm. Hmm. Well, well. Belgian really doing the baseball thing again. Hey, want me to bring up the Belgian champions? I still have their website up here. <laughs> Talk about Belgian baseball if you like. Chuck Traxler. Thoughts on how low they can drop Jimmy and AMC? Uh, are they tied together? Well, they're definitely in the same short basket. Uh, AMC can go to zero for sure. Um, oops. I don't want the theaters. I want share price. So AMC's at 314. So... Yeah, that's equivalent of what thirty cents pre-split. So it's really, really, really low right now. Um, could it go lower? Yes, it can go to zero because they can't make a profit and they owe five billion dollars. Uh, GameStop, they can try to bring GameStop to zero, but GameStop has a billion dollars and makes a profit. So. Two entirely different things going on with both of them, although they're trying to do both because they're both tied in with the with that basket, the XTF basket or whatever it was. Um, so, yeah, they had a big drop today, down sixteen percent today. Mmm, mmm, brutal. Kelly Reed, countries all over. The West are reporting record low birth rates. I mean, rapidly decreasing hopes of financial security and rapidly increasing sense of despair for the future can definitely do it. Yeah. I mean, like Elon Musk is like, oh, we have to like have babies like crazy. Oh, it's easy for you to say when you're worth $200 billion. And right. Like, yes, you can have 12 children and ignore all of them as apparently you do. 
Uh, but for the, everyone else, like that's a thing recently that said, um, uh, women have no interest in getting married because they cannot find a financially stable partner. <laughs> like that's it. Like they're like, well, I'd love to get married. I'd love to have children and family, but, uh, all I see out there are broken millennials and Gen Zers and none of them have enough income to get married and have a family. Uh, and I don't want to be destitute and like, you know, it's, it's hard, it's hard to attract a lady if, you know, you can't afford a place to live or a car or, you know, take them vacations or have hobbies. And all you can do is like afford to do is like sit inside your house and watch Netflix all day. Uh, cause that's it. You can't afford anything else. Well, you're not going to be out there. You're not going to find the people you need. Um, and like in China, They've got this disaffected youth and they have no jobs, no money. Uh, there was a, a, a glaring disparity between the number of women who exist and the number of men who exist because the one child policy encouraged people to like drown baby girls and stuff. Uh, so now the women look at, look at everyone and like, well, they don't have jobs and I can go anywhere in the world and find a husband. And so there's a drain happening that way. And you know, these, these, the disaffected youth in China, they really have, they know what's up. They're like, hey, I got no job. I got no prospects. I have no future. All I could hope for is my parents can support me. And then when they die, I inherit something. That's the only way I'm making it through this. That seems to be the story happening again and again in a lot of these places around the world. Um, and like, naturally, when, 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 when life improves for people, they have fewer kids. They just do because they don't need, they don't have a farm. They don't need like all the laborers and kids milking cows and stuff. And so they, they, their, their adolescence get prolonged because their schooling goes past eighth grade and it goes past high school and it goes past college. And, and so by the time they're ready to set death, settle down, they're like late twenties, early thirties. They've missed out on 10, 15 years of previous breeding that would happen with older generations. You know, some girl at 15 gets pregnant. She has babies all the way through her thirties. And then by 45, she dies having her 12th child. And that's it. Right. Uh, and then the husband gets a mail order bride and then she gets on a train, comes across the prairie and then yada, yada, yada. Um, now people have children later. They've got careers. They've got hobbies, they got interests. Right. And so if they can't afford children, they don't want that many. Maybe one or two. That's it. And then, and then they're done. They, someone gets a tubes tides or they gets a vasectomy or whatever. And they just don't have them anymore. The difference now is people who would normally be waiting to like build their career and everything to have children are now like getting to their thirties and realizing that they don't have a career or anything worthwhile. And so like, okay, maybe by 35 so that that window is being extended by another five, 10 years. And then they're discovering that now it's too late. They're old. They still have no money. It's not going to happen. And you know, this, this should be looked at, by individual nations and uh, governments as a national security threat in a way. Not that we need to have like 10 kids each, but at least have a replacement population, right? And if your birth rate is absolutely collapsing, you need to have immigrants come in and fill the void because you still have production and services and everything else that, that, that uh, people need and the economies need. So if, if you don't have that, and you have instead a whole bunch of like xenophobic assholes like get out of here foreigners like okay now what your cities are gonna empty no one's gonna be there to make your food uh i guess ai and robots that's the only way they're gonna be able to do it well that's just going to consolidate even more power in the central few making everyone else even more poor than they were before and having less kids than, than they were before so i'm not sure exactly what the solution is uh maybe antitrust break up everything break all these companies into a thousand pieces and start all over again. You know, it, the redundancy I think is important for an economy. I know it sounds weird. It's kind of like a functionalist sociological perspective, but think about like the number of companies AT&T has acquired over the years, right? You had Ma Bell, this big giant thing got smashed into the little baby bells and the baby bells have all consolidated back into like four companies and AT&T didn't just buy up other telecoms. They bought up TV networks, satellite networks, television stations, you know, news publications, uh, 
uh, internet websites, you know, domains, search engines. And now this company that, that was broken into little pieces in, in antitrust in the early 80s now has gobbled up 10,000 more companies, right? Those 10,000 companies used to have 10,000 CEOs, right? Those 10,000 CEOs used to have also 10,000 presidents. Those 10,000 presidents had four executive VPs each one. Those four executive VPs all had, you know, 30 middle managers. Those 30 middle managers all had four to 20 people below them, right? And so you have these pyramids, pyramid after pyramid after pyramid of all these individual companies employing hundreds or thousands of extra people. And then AT&T buys them, takes their IP, gobbles them up, lays, everybody's off, lays everybody off. And now there's one CEO, you know, one president, four executive VPs, you know, 20 middle managers, and then boom, the rest of AT&T. Whereas before you had all these pyramids before, everyone was making a wage, everyone was competing with each other, forcing uh, prices to be kept lower, right? Now we've got four companies that produce our food. That's it. You want food, there's four companies that you're going to get your food from. And they don't compete. They, they, they price fix. Uh, a whole bunch of state AGs just won a whole bunch of lawsuits against meat, meat, against meat producers for fixing the price of beef and chicken. Basically saying like, hey, uh, if we just make all of our chicken get processed in these like five plants around the country, we can all charge the same for it. And we're like, well, we gobbled up everybody else, so why not? Let's do that. And so like price fixing across the board, the inflation we saw, numerous articles have come out in the last few weeks showing that most of the inflation was not inflation. It was companies price gouging and taking record profits, right? Kellogg's. Kellogg's made $2.1 billion in profit last year. They just made a $300 million dividend, did $150 million in stock buybacks, and raised their prices 20.5%. That's not inflation. That's not the market. That is an oligopoly. You know, there's Post, Kellogg's, Quaker Oats, uh, General Mills. There's four, four cereal companies that exist. And that is them being like, we can charge whatever the hell we want, right? Because they can. There's no one to compete. They bought up all the little brands that would have competed with them. And they went, eh, we own them all now. We closed with half of them and they don't exist anymore. Uh, and now we can charge whatever we want. And that's what they're doing. It's the same company that did a lockout of all their employees for wanting to unionize, right? And they eventually had to cave in. But, like, ah, just ah, shake her head and look at the powers of B and ask them, like, hey, do your job. Smash these companies into a thousand pieces. Let's have some competition again and start all over. Now, I remember, I remember learning about monopolies. In Mr. Cram's fourth grade class, we had, a whole, we had a whole thing on the robber barons and stuff, and we learned about the monopolies, why they're bad, why they happen in the first place due to, like, laissez-faire capitalism. Like, you gobble up the competition, you can undercut them and do whatever you want, and price them out of business, and you take them up and, and you own their IP and their customers, and you grow from there. That, yes, you can grow your company that way. But in the end, what happens is the company gets lazy, because they don't have anyone to compete against anymore. They can jack up their prices wherever they want because you have no other options. And any competition that comes up just gets hammered out of existence. And I think that's where we are. We are in the enchidification of everything. And we are fastly, quickly, and expediently enchidifying every aspect of every market we have. And that's where we are. So, the Okay. <clears throat> Grape Knowles, what's the most fanciful dream of how you see GME screwing the shorts and us covertly dancing on their graves? I think you multi-prong it and you do it without a doubt. So if they are involved with Bed Bath & Beyond, right? Let's say they're involved with Bed Bath & Beyond. They bring Bed Bath & Beyond from the dead. They have a deal with financiers. They have a settlement with JP Morgan, whatever. That's the pile of cash. So there ends up being a huge payout to all the shareholders of 
you know, forty-four dollars or whatever it might be, and uh, everyone gets a big old chunk, chunk, chunk of change from that. So that so now the PILs from all these short hedge funds and market makers are in the tens or hundreds of billions of dollars right off the bat. And then you announce on the GameStop side a crypto dividend. Okay. They announce a crypto dividend of some kind or shares in a subsidiary or something that, that goes on T0 or something similar. And it cannot be replicated. So now there's there's a push. You got to start buying GameStop, uh, uh, either buy up the obligation or buy up this crypto dividend. Then on the Bed Bath side, right, they're like, hey, we're now splitting up into five different companies. And you have Lego and Taylor Swift, and I don't know who they have on there, G America and Teddy and blah, 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 blah. So they go poof into several different companies, all with cash values of varying amounts that all of a sudden create, like, pump that four cent stock before it, before it disappeared forever to two, three hundred dollars. So they got to pay out of cash. They're underwater on all of their shorts by tens of thousands of percent. Uh, GameStop's offering a dividend of some kind and they've basically figured out a way to raise tens of billions of dollars in cash on it all because the price went through the roof and they're doing a stock offering right so now they're done like i think that'd be enough to wipe out every short hedge fund and market maker in existence they just would be absolute toast um so yeah so that's that's what i say do that (laughs) i'm sure there's more evil things that they can think of um, but yeah, they really don't like the fact that GameStop made a profit. They really, 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 really don't like that fact. Uh, Nil, uh, Sam Bakeman Freed, uh, sentenced 25 years. Yep. I'm really surprised that others have not been sentenced in that. Um, I mean, he was co CEO with uh, Ryan Salami, who was fully aware of what was going on. Right? Why hasn't Ryan Salami been sued? Or, or arrested. Uh, it's interesting. It's interesting that he's, he's, he's the only one in that entire group that's looking at prison time. Protican. They haven't been reinstated. That filing was using outdated info by the registered agent in Florida. What? Has it been reinstated? Did I miss something? Oh, Chuck Traxler, gold prices on the rise. Will that affect HYMC? Uh, not really. Um, HYMC's big thing is that they need a, a huge metallurgical plant. So most of the gold in HYMC's mine in Nevada is trapped in sulfides. Think pyrite, right? And it takes a lot of processing. You got to smash that stuff down put it through huge amounts of chemical baths to pull out all the oxidizers, pull out the sulfides. Eventually you're left with the gold behind. Um, I talked about this before that the, the Kid Creek um, mine in Canada has one of the largest, is one of the largest sulfide mines in the entire world. We can go visit them again. Cause why not? We love looking at maps. So Google earth, Google earth. Okay. So up here in Timmins, Uh, here's Timmins. This is the Kid Creek mine here. This is uh, a giant, absolutely giant um, hole in the ground over Miaw. But the tunnels go down another 11,000 feet. It is the deepest hole in the Western Hemisphere. It is the closest point uh, a human being has ever gotten to the center of the Earth. And it's produced. Uh, it's, it's, a co- it's a silver and copper mine, and they do zinc to byproduct They've done uh, $20 billion in gold as a byproduct of their copper and silver operations. Now, there's a train line that goes from uh, here. They load up the train, and the train takes all the material, falls all the way down, ends up do, 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 training along, train, 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 goes for a few miles out to their mill site, which is here. This is the Kid Creek Mineralogical Site. Um, it is... Uh, uh, Oh, that's the Hoyle site. Sorry. Kid Creek. Mineralogical site. This is Kid Creek. Which one's Kid Creek? Damn it. Duh. Kid Creek is one of these. <laughs> but anyway, it's a billion dollar site. For, here it is. Here it is. Kid Creek mine site. So this facility here. This processes all the ore. 
This is a billion dollar site for processing all that ore and turning it from, from these weird sulfide, volcanic metal sulfides that they have and turning them into copper, zinc, silver, nickel, and gold. And uh, this type of site that they need to build at, at the HYMC plant or mine in Nevada, the problem is, is that they don't have the capital to build this. Texas Gold Gulf Sulfur originally built this thing back in the 60s, uh, probably a much price much lower than a billion dollars it would cost today. Um, but uh, yeah, so they're, they're, they're going to need a facility like this of equal size because there's a lot of gold trapped in the sulfides out in Nevada. Um, I can't remember where it is. It's pretty close to Minamucca and Lovelock, if I remember correctly. I think it's up here. It's a town of Sulphur. They got a rail line that goes through here. So they got that. I think this might be it. I think this is it. Let the, let the pixels come back here. Come on, pixels. Come on, you can do it. Yeah, this is the, this is the high croft site. So they got they have a, they have, they got most of the high grade gold, which is the stuff that's the gold's in a native state. So they got a bunch of that. They do have a rail line. So if they want to build a processing facility, they can build one elsewhere because they're right next to this rail line here. Um, the problem is is that their current uh, processing plant is this this little guy right here. This is this is their this is their processing plant. All it is is basically a mill. They grind the rock, get the gold flakes out of it, wash the gold flakes out, turn them into bars, sell them. You can't do that with, with volcanic metal sulfides. And all of the, the papers they've released talking about how much money and how much gold they have. They have basically tens of millions of ounces of gold, but it's all of those volcanic metal sulfides and they need to build a treatment plant. So this, this mine is... Uh, eh, three miles across or so, right? Uh, there's no tunnels. It's all open pit. Their facility is do, 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 do. their facility for processing this stuff is come on. Ugh, put that in feet. Is 267 feet across. So about the size of a football field, a little bit smaller. Okay, let's go back to Canada real quick. We'll see how big that that facility is for processing the volcanic metal sulfides up there in Canada. Do, 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 do. Back to Timmins. Back to Timmins. Back to Timmins. There's Kid Creek site. Um, Kid Creek building. So this one looks like it's not even processing. This is processing stuff here. So this facility is... Move. Is... This is one building. It is 700 feet across one direction. This building's another two, 300 feet. Uh, this one, come on. Another 500 feet, 700 by 500. Um, it's got the rail yards, processing facilities. I mean, just just the, the, the pond where they dump all the material is dwarfs the size of the entire mine site where Highcroft is. How, how big how big cross is this guy? Come on, click. Click. Yeah, that's over three miles is just their just their mill site. So Highcroft's got a long ways to go if they want to make money off of off of what they have there. It's gonna be a while. Um Corporate Walnut, what's your opinion on uh, on idolization of DD writers? Um, some get things right, a lot of them get things wrong. Uh, some of them do nothing but get things wrong, but they seem like a nice person. <laughs> um, some of them, uh, I think, write good DD at first to lure the people in. And then they become shills because that was their original intent in the first place. Uh, they 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 wanted to get in, and then they start the bad mouthing. Once 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 they get trusted in, then they then they take their the original path, which is uh, bad mouthing everything and everyone, and becoming shills. I think there's a lot of them that go that way, and then eventually they disappear. 
some of the DD writers do a great job and then something breaks their brain at some point. Um, think about like, you guys remember Charlie? Charlie used to do these little videos where he would read the legalese of like SEC filings and he did a pretty good job. I'll be honest, did he read those things? Like he's interpreting this pretty well. And then he, his brain broke. He went somewhere like where he went to like lizard people land and weird conspiracies and 9-11 conspiracies and stuff. And like, it, uh, I don't know what sent him that way. What, what, what did it? But like, he went from doing something that's you know, pretty good to all of a sudden, like you're insane. And I don't know what's wrong with your brain. Uh, it seems like a few people kind of go that way. Um, I like to look at, at DD in a way of like, huh, that's a good take. And then I try to filter it through everything else I know. Um, every date, every DD date that's ever come about, you know, ever since people were hyping triple witching for, uh, February, um, 2021, like they go oh, triple, 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 triple witching. And that wasn't the date. It was like two weeks later. But they, they keep hyping that stuff, and it always seems to fire on days we kind of least expect it. Yeah, Flat Earth got them. Yeah, Flat Earth probably got them. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's... I think there's some that that, that do incredible work. Um, we've had quite a few of them on this show talk about their work. Uh, and there's others that I read their stuff, and I'm like, oh, you might be a nice guy, but... You've never been right about anything, and I think you're completely misinterpreting this one very specific, very specific term, and that happens quite a bit too. Um, but yeah, like there are some that 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 like logical info, logical info, logical info, logical info, and you follow it, and then all of a sudden, like get to like the tenth step, and it's all of a sudden, and then and then uh, Donald Trump is going to buy GameStop. And then, and then, and then they're going to turn GameStop into, into a secret military, uh, operation. And like, what, what, like we were doing so well, we were doing so well. We we're following. Okay. This, this filing happened, this filing happened. And then what the hell are you talking about? That seems to happen quite a bit with a lot of them too. Like there's, I, I don't know like what, if they had an editor, the editor would go, okay, we got, we're fine here. We're just going to delete all this stuff down here. Cause this is crazy people things and these things, you know, this step of uh, like this loan lender lent money there. They got money from this guy and you know, they own this interest and this, you know, like those things make sense. And then all of a sudden they go into like Looney Tunes land and <laughs> like, I don't, I don't know what to make of that. So, you know, take, take it all with a grain of salt. And, uh, if you, if you need to like hype yourself up for a day, cool. But everyone's been super wrong so far. Uh, Joe Witchman, any uh, uh, opinions on Joanne? I love that sheet. Um, no, I don't. Joanna Michael, like if I need craft stuff, I go to Joanna Michaels because um, Hobby Lobby is owned by Satan. And I don't want to give them any money. So, yeah, I have good Joanna Michaels. I don't really know much about them. Otherwise, I, I rarely have had a need to go to a place like that. I think I went to Joanne's to buy googly eyes because um, when I go on road trips, I put googly eyes on all of the cattle crossing signs in Nevada when I come by one. So if you go, if you're driving through Nevada to see googly eyes on a cattle crossing sign, that was me. Um, have you guys ever seen the googly eyes on a cattle crossing sign? Not too... Uh, get too far out of all right nevada cattle crossing sign they're different the cow is like startled ah! that's that's the difference between these cows um they they're like ah! so they go they go great with googly eyes so Nevada crossing sign. Let's see if anyone's a uh, googly eyes. Um, I might be the only one. Did no one take pictures of my googly eyes on these cows? So normally they're just like a cow, just kind of sitting there. But Nevada, the cow is startled. The cow's like, "Oh my god!" 
No one's put pictures up of my googly eyes. Maybe they can't see them when they're flying by at 100 miles an hour. But yeah, uh, I put googly eyes on these suckers. <laughs> and that's that's what I bought at Joanne's. Uh, Two-ton epoxy and googly eyes. And then I stop, climb top of the roof of my truck, slap them on there and drive away. Good times. Good times. I'll show you pictures someday. Cat, what do you want? What do you want, cat? Oh, it's 411. And you know who's, who hasn't stared at me all day begging? has been the creature. So let's do this real quick. Oh, is that, is that the sound you wanted to hear? Started. Wait, I hit the wrong one? Dang it, that was the wrong one. That one. Ah. Stinky weed, you can smell all my allergies. What are you doing on the other side? Huh? What are you doing over here? You're on the wrong side, dude. This is over here. Come on. Yeah. Okay. Turn off the nuggy stare. Come get it. Come get it. Come get it. Come on. Come on. Come on. Okay. We'll do a big monkey. What him. Come on. <laughs> oh, so gentle. She kept slipping on the keyboard because she put her paw on it. <laughs> uh, all right. There you go. Was that was that a happy time? Is that good for the monkey butt? Season 54, with BBYQ blue balling. Hey everyone, uh, how will you file your taxes this year? Should I request a note be made on my filing so I can claim any future benefit for BBYQ? What can I write? Not financial advice. I don't think the federal government actually cares if you declare it one way or the other. I think if you make a note with your broker and say, hey, you guys record this conversation, I want noted that if new equity is issued, I want it. It's mine. That's what I paid for. And them going, yes, sir. Uh, that's probably what matters more. Because even the GameStop 10K, they mentioned something about we were forced to accept losses on a stock we did not sell. Which makes me think that, hmm, GameStop must have had Bed Bath & Beyond shares for some reason. Because why else would they have to say that they took a loss on a stock they didn't sell? What other stock is there out there that's doing that? So GameStop had to do it. So I guess we have to as well. Dan Bachelor, men met, and met up 12% after hours. What is going on? Uh, went up, dropped a little bit. It's at 402. I'm doing a lot of climbing. Mm, doing a lot of climbing. What's the, what's the volume? And met volume. Uh, the volume is over a million. The average volume has been 300,000. So somebody's doing lots of buying. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, Frozen Day Production, can you explain what nuclear winter is? Um, nuclear winter is when we blow everything to shit with a nuclear apocalypse. It creates so much dust that blows up in the atmosphere that it blocks out the sun and everything freezes and dies. So you have everything freezing and dying, plus, ex plus experiencing fallout and radiation poisoning. That's nuclear winter. Similar to a winter that you would have when uh, you have a giant meteorite impact and it kicks up enough dust that blocks out the sun. We could have a volcanic winter as well. Say a super volcano like uh, uh, Long Valley or Yellowstone goes kablooey, can kick out enough ash to block out the sun for like years, plunging everything into darkness and cold, icy hell hole. Uh, yeah, so those, those are three instances known where um, winters can be created via dust. Uh, Dana Bachelor, Houston, early reactions to A24 Civil War, thought provoking, haunting, and not what you think. Sounds like a banger from a great studio. Looking forward to it. The the trailers are very intriguing. Plus, they have Run the Jewels on the soundtrack, which, you know, that'll make me watch. 
Well, uh, it comes out, what, in two weeks? On the 12th, I think? <sighs> First impressions. We need to fix our political system. The danger of the six-minute window is scary. Current leader has cognitive issues, leading uh, representative candidate as judgment issues. How do we fix this? By not electing the worst people we possibly can. I mean, we had... In 2020, we had 22 candidates running for the Democratic nomination. All right, 22 of them. Uh, I would put Biden as my 18th or 19th favorite on that list. Like, I would put Marion Williamson behind him. I would have put uh, uh, who's that dude, the the math guy, Andrew. Uh, what's his name, Monkey? The one's tr- really actually a libertarian. It kind of sucks. That dude, tech guy. Um, who else would have had behind him? Oh, uh, 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 what's her butt from Hawaii? Uh, the one that's part of the Butler group. Um, that chick. And then maybe Biden. Beyond that, the other 18 candidates would have, I would have been happier with. Uh, I don't know why we do this as a country. We, as, as Democrats do as a political party, but they take the person who, appeals the most to everyone in the country and somehow don't let them run oftentimes like in 2000 i met al gore on several occasions i've had conversations sitting on a couch with al gore for like hours in the past um he's a personable guy when he's not campaigning when he's campaigning he's the most wooden stiff dude in the entire world bill bradley would have been such a superior candidate for president in 2000, you wouldn't even have to had to worry about uh, uh, GW. In 2004, you know, uh, Howard Dean would have been a far superior candidate than John Kerry, Mr. Steph John Kerry. Like, we constantly like, oh, yeah, this guy's more electable, and then he ends up not being electable at all. Because <laughs> he doesn't appeal to anyone. He's just boring, straight-laced, rare. Uh, happens a lot with, with Democratic candidates. Um, on the Republican side, the problem with a lot of Republicans is that I think they only, how to put this, they only respond to a big, big, strong man. And when somebody easily asserts themselves as a big, strong man, they have no ability to be like, you're not actually a big, strong man. And, uh, which is what they should have done with Donald Trump. Like if, if you want to, if you wanted to beat, if you want to beat Donald Trump, you gotta be in his own game, which means you have to have somebody who's actually funny and quick-witted in there to just rip him a new one constantly until he just falls apart. Like if you, you have to be like Obama at the uh, 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 press dinner, right? When he just tore Donald up. <laughs> like you need to be that and relentless and nonstop. You need to like you need to. Just be pe- as petty as he is, right? And he's going to whine and whine and whine. And all you have to do is show no remorse and no shame. So, like, Donald Trump says something like, you know, oh, we're, you know, I don't know, making fun of Marco Rubio or something for being a little boy. And my, all Marco Rubio has to do is be like, well, at least I'm not fat, old, and ugly, <laughs> right? And then Donald Trump's like, well, that's offensive. I'm like, oh, really? I don't think it is. I think you're fat, old, and ugly. And just harp on it. Again and again, you had, to, you had to bully the bully until he absolutely just either spirals or explodes, one or the other. And if he spirals, he's out. He's done. You won. If he explodes, uh, he's going to be so unhinged. People are like, "Oh, that's not the type of guy I want in charge," right? So you got to, you got to, you got to be mean. You got to be absolutely brutal with that guy and point out all of his flaws all the time. Like, "Oh, nice neck vagina you got there, Trump," and he just. Because he's so vain, he won't be able to handle it. Uh, yeah, you know, he, he, there might be people like, oh, I'm offended by that. But there's nothing Donald Trump hasn't said about anybody that's 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 not worse. <laughs> like, or so he said a lot of people, uh, sorry, I said wrong. He said a lot worse about people than anything he's gotten in return. And I don't think anybody in the Republican Party has the wit or the will to actually go after him in that way. Uh, and they're going to pay the price for it. I mean, he's absolutely destroyed the RNC's ability to raise funds this, at this point, and they spend basically half of all the money they have on his legal bills. 
And so there's no money going out for uh, congressional campaigns. There's some senators who might be able to self-fund and they might do all right. But for the most part, the, there's no money right now going into the RNC to elect candidates. And I think they're going to get absolutely demolished. And then the, the, the Florida Supreme Court ruling today, uh, allowing them to put um, uh, abortion on the ballot might turn Florida blue. Like <laughs> that is the biggest mistake Florida Republicans could have ever possibly had. Everywhere, everywhere abortion has gone, the ballot has resulted in in democratic gains. I'm talking in in, in districts and special elections where Trump won by 30 points. You put abortion on the ballot, all of a sudden those Republican candidates lose by 30 points because all the women are like, oh, I want the right to an abortion. And they will go out and they will outvote every lazy dude out there. So, what can we do to fix it? Well, smash the companies into lots of little pieces. We talked about that earlier. And uh, be dumb enough to put abortion on the ballot. And I think we'll fix a lot of things. Cat. Um, Blue Smoker H1 bridge contracts in China. I don't know what that means. It's like, like, Contracts to build bridges? Buying a bridge in China? Turkish. Hey, Bertha Houston. I am running behind, but what the F is going on with BBY? Why no action by RC? I hear George Sherman, ex-CEO of GME, sent something to GME. Uh, Tendi Baron wrote about this on his ex account. Not sure if it's true. Uh, send, a link to, send a link to me. I don't know what that's about. I've not read it yet. Chris Vega, 316, Houston. Happy birthday. Can you explain what it means when a company honeypots their shares? Well, honeypot was an idea I had a few years ago. And um, there's a couple of different forms it can take. But basically, it is enticing shorts to short the hell out of your company and then blowing them up. So my original idea is, is you know, say you got $30 million in the bank. Right? You're, you're well to do. You got some generational wealth and you're sick of the shorts screwing over your family company, whatever. So you create a holding company and you put on the OTC. This holding company sits there and it might have you know a couple million dollars in assets. Maybe you just buy some blue chips or something and you just sit on that and you sell a million shares at a dollar each. So there's a million shares out there. You own two thirds, three quarters of them, whatever. Those don't trade. But there's a million shares that are trading. And you let that thing bounce around the OTC for a long time. And uh, you you make sure the earnings reports are like, meh, right? You know, doing too much. Maybe they're earning $10,000, losing $10,000 quarter to quarter, whatever. You don't actually care. What you care about is not caring. And you show that by, you know, being ho-hum, not having much in your prospectus. Like you're not doing anything to grow the company. And you let the shorts short the hell out of this thing. And you make it so the par value on the shares are like, Ten thousandth of a penny, like way down there. Then you have a shell company. You have a shell company in, I don't know, Caymans, Bahama, whatever. And that shell company buys up shares of your honeypot, of your of your of your holdings company. And they're buying them up. You know, they're spending ten million dollars buying up a hundred billion shares. That there's no there's not a hundred billion shares. Only one million shares. But the market makers will keep selling. Right? They'll keep selling as long as there's requests, they'll generate liquidity. And then they will sell this offshore uh, holdings company 100 billion shares if you let them. Right? That's when, as, as majority owner of the original company, you say, you know what? I'm sick of this company getting hammered by the shorts. I'm going to turn the company private at $10 a share and I'm just going to walk away. Right? Then all of a sudden, you, you take $10 million, you send that $10 million to your registered agent and transfer agent, and the transfer agent distributes the $10 million to 1 million shareholders, but then the payment and lose from the market makers and the hedge funds, all of a sudden total, you've got 100 billion shares in this offshore account. They got to pay $10 on every single one of those 100 billion shares. They owe $1 trillion in cash, not just to you, but to everyone else who bought shares at a fraction of a penny. So you're getting $100 billion in cash, or sorry, trillion dollars in cash in your Cayman account, <laughs> right? In payment and lose. And everyone else who, who didn't have legit shares also gets $10 as payment in lieu. And the company goes private. Done. Poof. You can offer a, you can offer a, a, a dividend, right? Like, let's say, and Matt, right? Someone's buying up all their shares right now. And they, they're, they're, 
the price is going up, volume's up. There's only 5.7 million shares, I think it's 5.7 million, in their float. Let's say they go out and they buy 10 million. Because they can. The market makers will sell it to them. So they go out, they spend 10 days. Million, million shares a day. They're doing it from six, seven different brokerages, all connected to one person or entity. They buy them all up. And then they report on uh, the 13F, like, hey, I am a majority owner in Metamaterials. Not only that, but I own 200% of the shares in existence. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the company private at a, at a share price of a million dollars a share. <laughs> right? So not only will you end up with the 7 million shares that actually exist for the company, you will then receive for the extra 3 million, a million dollars a share on top of that 3 million. And anybody else in existence who has shares will also receive a million dollars. Company's gone private. Done. You just honey potted all those dudes. So, and made trillions of dollars in the process. So yeah, the, I think, I think someone needs to honey pot a major corp, um, uh, uh, a company so that the shorts do not ever try this again and can never, can never afford to do it again. Just take them out in one swoop. Honeypot. Honeypot, honeypot, honeypot. Someone's got to do it. I don't have the capital to do it. If I did, I totally would. Okay. Got three minutes left and then I got to run away. <clears throat> Keegan Murphy, Murphy, happy birthday. Thank you. Blue Smoke, we have the Antichrist show up soon. I think he's selling Bibles right now. MT, Houston, what's the latest between USA, China, and Taiwan? Uh, China's rattling their sabers. They, you know, they may be dumb enough to invade Taiwan one of these days, but I have the feeling that Taiwan has enough weaponry to basically down the entire Chinese Navy. Yeah, China might might get some boom booms, but all the aircraft carriers are probably toast. Uh, I, I think Taiwan has enough modern weaponry to put up such a fight that they wipe out China's navy, and then what? China would have to resort to um, you know air bombardments from there, and then trying to invade an island without a navy afterwards by just dropping paratroopers. It seems like it's like it's gonna be pretty brutal, and I don't I don't think they're gonna last very well doing that. <clears throat> Uh, but yeah, so, and if they do it, they're going to be on sanctions lists. They're going to lose all their income. Companies won't make things in China anymore. They'll just leave and they'll destroy their tooling or take it with them. Uh, it'd be pretty brutal. Uh, Nil 1981 AA took out the bonds and did lease backs on AMC while he was playing with Apollo. Well, uh, while he was with Apollo. Uh, and then he's like, we have to pay back the bonds. You mean the bonds you took out? I just can't. People voted for this. <sighs> I know he needs to be gone. There needs to be somebody to just buy up enough shares to a proxy fight and just get rid of the dude. <clears throat> I'm going to do one more and then I'm going to run away. Who did that? Who did that? <clears throat> Fred Jones Houston, I don't know if you mentioned this, uh, was not paying attention. Did you take out some puts on DJHP? I, DJT? I did not. The implied volatility has been so high that I have not. Although I should have, should have just bought something that was far out. What was, what is real quick look at this thing? Um, do, 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 DJT, what did he, always been looking at like June options, the June leaps, <clears throat> and, huh, the 2.5 puts didn't do anything today, weird, and the $10 puts lost money, how the hell the $10 puts lose money, that doesn't make any sense, the whole thing went down, Fucking twenty percent. Implied volatility is insane. Like the forty-seven dollar put only went up four percent today, even though the stock price started like sixty bucks. That doesn't make any sense to me. 
How is that even possible? The play volatility is so insane. Um, yeah. So, it'll pay off eventually. All right. Was that it? That's it. It's 4.31. I got to go. Uh, I'll see you guys Wednesday. Not sure what time. Um, there might be another dog here on Wednesday. M Monkey's friend Lucky, I think, is going to swing by, and I'm going to be taking care of it for a day so that Scott can uh, film. He's house-sitting, but he's got to do a film of some kind on Wednesday. So, Monkey, your buddy your buddy Lucky's going to hang out. Remember, Lucky's been like five years since you've seen Lucky. So, we'll have another dog hanging out. Lucky's a sweetheart golden retriever. Anyway, you guys have a good night. I will see you later. Bam. <laughs>